So when we talk about seeds and we talk about our lives, we have these, uh, this, this correlation that if the seed isn't watered, uh, then nothing will grow. If we don't continually water our faith, and this week I'm talking about through the word of Jesus Christ, through the written word, then we too tend to dry up. We've been refreshed by this gift uh, of knowing Christ through our baptism. But if we do more than that, don't do any more than that, we miss it. And we often find ourselves without that water that we need. There are a lot of times that I feel dry. And I'm guessing the same is true for you. That there are times when your faith has kind of dried out. Usually, it's by our own actions. Jeremiah 2.13 says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. The first service, I said to him, I'm really glad you're here because you know what cisterns are. There are not many of us here that are big on cisterns. They're, we are used to, that means like the main water system now. For, it, it's the way the water was stored. And the point that God's making here is that he is the living water. But we tend to try to find our own way and our own water. That we dig our own holes and try to store up for ourselves what we need to be refreshed and what we need to grow. But it comes from God. Only the living word is God in us. And when we share that in that word, we're in good places. But if we don't enter into that, if we don't enter into a study, if we don't enter into listening to God talk to us, we can dry up. We can be like the bones at the beginning of Ezekiel. In the 37th chapter, it says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. And it was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley. And they were very dry. It was those who had lost the faith. And these images that we have of uh, I, in the first service, I again said it, it, it said it's a valley, but I felt like it was like a desert. I could feel the dryness of that imagery. And when we do not let God rule our lives, when we tend to let other things rule our lives, we start to get dried out because we're not being watered. We're not getting God's living word in us. It is a place where God gives us grace. And, and, and the thing is, it, even when we're dried out, God still loves us. So that's the point he makes in Ezekiel. He raises those bones up in the verses that follow. God wants us. God wants us to have this gift, this refreshment, this, this life in him. John, in the seventh chapter, says this, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let anyone who believes in me drink. As the scripture said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. If we invest in God, God will refresh us. If we try to go it alone, we start to wither and die out. God's living word waters the seed. God has this incredible plan for us. And he, he gave it to us in the seed of what we're to do in 2014 financially, what we're to do in our lives every single day. But if it's not water, if we just think it's God's idea and then we go run with it, it's not going to grow. It has to be nurtured and supported. It has to be fed by God's word. And he wants us to come to him. So if you're thirsty and, and not sure, come back to the living word. That living word is the, the nourishment we need. Psalm 119, 105 in the message again says, By your words, I can see where I'm going. They throw me 
of light and my dark path. We get lost along the way. We all do. Preachers and everybody else included, don't we? That's all right. Yeah, one. Richard, one. Uh, we get lost. And yet this word refreshes us. It helps us. It guides us. Gives us direction. Isn't that worth having as part of what we do on a daily basis? That's what God would like from us. But it's hard for us to live that out. We've got to, we've got to stay connected to God. How are we watered? How do we get that water? In Epcot, um, my family has a particular ride that they really like. We're not really the wild rock and roll kind of roller coaster ride things. But when we get on the land at Epcot, hey, we go wild. You know, it drops <laughs> off a good six inches when it hits that water. But when you go through that ride, and near the end of it, you get into the greenhouse period part of the ride. Uh, it's fascinating to see because what, what they do in there is they have these little, little tiny string-like threads that are watering tubes that feed each and every seed along the way. So every seed has this connection and is fed continually with water. The nutrients of that water are what help it to grow and grow remarkably if you've ever been in there. Some amazing things grow in there. And it, to me, it's like an image of the vine and the branches that we read about in Scripture. Because they're connected. They're connected and fed through that gift of water that comes to them. And if we can think of ourselves as, as needing to be fed like that on a continual basis, then we're starting to get the idea of where it's at. John 15, 1, I am the true vine, and the Father is the vine grower. You have already been cleansed, it goes on in verse 3, by the word that I've spoken to you. We've been cleansed by our baptism. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch does not bear fruit itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. We're watered by staying connected to God. And this gift, this gift of living word is a grace of God. Ready to water each and every day. Ready to be part of us and part of who we are meant to be. So we have to plug into it. We need to water, let God water us. And then let God grow us. Now that doesn't happen overnight. We talked last week about how when we plant the seeds, we get up the next day and we want to see the plant come up. Same thing's true when we water. When we water the seed, it doesn't just like shoot out of the ground, does it? It, it takes time. James 7 says this. James 5 7 says, Meanwhile, friends, wait patiently for the master's arrival. You see, farmers do this all the time, waiting for their valuable crops to mature, patiently letting the rain do its slow, but sure work. <clears throat> slow, but sure. <laughs> If we stay connected, if we stay watered by the word of God, we will grow. That's what God's saying here, right? That's what God wants us to do. Stay connected. If, and I know that when I stay in the word of God, when I, when I make a continual habit of being refreshed by what God has to say, I do better. And when I don't, the opposite is true. I start to dry up. It happens to all of us. And we just have to claim it and realize that there's a better answer. What God gives us is not temporary. This watering is a lifelong thing. John 13, 14 says this. Jesus said to the woman at the well, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. He gives it to us now. And we have some dry bubbles in our lives that need that water. 